my name is David Flinner, and uh, I've uh, presented with JSX Graph Conference before, so thank you for selecting me again. I wanted this time um, not to introduce anything new, but just kind of give some learning experiences that I had, you know, while creating JSX Graph Applets. Um, I, I started, I think, back in 2017, so it's been a while that I've been a user of JSX Graph, and ever since I started using it, like I've made uh, hundreds of apps, I've made quite a few. Um, I'm just going to show off a couple of them, and then I'm going to talk about how I go about creating apps and some of the lessons that I learned along the way. So uh, let me share screen and I'll get started. Uh, yes, so um, as I started out, I was doing everything kind of locally, um, but then I learned how to use GitHub and uh, GitHub has a great resource that allows you to have uh, a web page. And so um, that's where I keep all of my apps that I create, I just kind of keep a store of applets that I've made with JSX Graph because I mostly use these for teaching. Um, and I've got dozens of them, uh, you know, for each uh, different type of class that I'm teaching. And my students learn very quickly that I use a lot of these, you know, uh, in the classroom. And they really like to be able to see visually how uh, the mathematics works so that they get a, a nice understanding. Uh, some of the ones that I'm more proud of, uh, there's one I made with trigonometry uh, to demonstrate uh, the ambiguous case. Um, so when students are learning about the creation of triangles, uh, if all they're learning is how the uh, law of sines and law of cosines uh, work. Um, I guess the law of sines is where the ambiguous case comes into play. But um, if all they see is just the mathematics on paper, they don't get a full understanding, I think, as to what it means as to, you know, a triangle just simply doesn't exist. And so I, I made this app where um, you could uh, create, you know, a triangle based off of uh, starting angle measures or starting lengths. And uh, you can even uh, declare what those lengths should be. So if you have a homework problem, for instance, you know, and it tells you exactly what length to be, then, then this length over here won't ever change. Um, but you can always, if you don't declare the lengths, you can always change them. And so the students can kind of I can do this in front of the students and I can show them like, you know, there's a reason why the the triangle doesn't exist, you know, or perhaps uh, if I have a longer side, let's say, uh, let's just make it 7.5, that should do. Well, actually, you know what, I'll bring it up here. If I have a longer side as to why there might actually be two different triangles that can be created so that they can kind of see uh, what happens in that situation. They can just understand it visually what's going on rather than uh, seeing it, you know, just worked out on paper. Um, I also created a, one for calculus in demonstrating limits. And uh, this one uh, I, I really like because the students can input a function uh, I, I made it to where you can edit the function. And let me make one like this, right? Okay, uh, ignore the uh, NANs. It's supposed to do that, it's fine. Um, let's see, I'm gonna add a point here at what, two, four, I think. Yes, great, that was a good guess. Okay, um, yeah, and so students here can kind of see and, uh, and interact with the graph and see like when a graph has a hole, you know, what happens uh, to the values of the function as you approach that hole. So you can take uh, basically the limit on the left and then observe what the values are on the Y and then, well, I guess, sorry, that's the limit on the right. Um, and then uh, do the limit on the left and limit on the right and sort of 
observe that the y values are approaching each other and kind of get a visual understanding of what's going on with the limit. Uh, now, the reason the NANs all exist here is because I, I simply haven't uh, declared what value I'm approaching. So if I declare that, then it will uh, show up and do nicely. So my calculus students like to see that, and I even have a project that I design around that, that app that they do on their own and explore different types of functions. In statistics, I, I made a really involved app um, over the pandemic, which is a uh, statistics calculator where they can you know, work with sets of data very similar to how many calculators work. Um, they can calculate uh, normal distribution probabilities, t distribution probabilities, chi squared, you know, a lot of different uh, things that are necessary for introductory level statistics. Um, and this has been great, you know, since I created it for students who don't want to pay the money to um, uh, purchase an expensive calculator, then not just allow them to use this in class. But as you can see, like I've developed a lot of different um, applications uh, over the years for, uh, for J with JSX Graph, and so um, I'm a big user of it. So uh, I don't want to just show things that I've created. I want to uh, demonstrate like my process of creation. Um, so uh, this is sort of you know extending upon uh, the earlier beginner class that was uh, done this morning. Uh, I was watching and observing the things that were talked about there to make sure that I'm not doubling over on, <laughs> on things that were discussed. Um, but, you know, uh, the main resources that I use when I'm creating an app, first off, uh, was mentioned Visual Studio Code, and uh, I, I'm a big fan of that uh, program editor as well. Uh, you certainly need some sort of text editor, uh, as was mentioned, and uh, syntax highlighting is, is great. Um, and Visual Studio Code is free and it's cross-platform, you know, so it, it's almost ubiquitous in programming today. Uh, one of the big resources that I just have up and running whenever I am creating an app is the JSX Graph API. Uh, it was also asked in uh, the earlier session, like where you can find the reference information as to what types of inputs you can change like on a point or a line. And this is this is the place where I go. Um, so for any type of construct that I'm building, I generally go here first. Um, although from the last session, I think I might start, uh, you know, looking along the lines of uh, typing things into ChatGPT as a starting point, because that, that's pretty nice. I never really considered that. Uh, but the API here is great. It, gives you example cases and a lot of information on uh, how to make basic creations. And then you can kind of take it uh, from, from that point forward. Um, so that's indispensable. Um, and then the examples database that is hosted at the JSX website, um, just looking through those and seeing what has been created, and then you can sort of get some ideas of things that you can create yourself. Um, when you run into problems that you don't find answers to, the JSX, the Google group, is uh, absolutely wonderful. Um, there's tons of posts there, and uh, I often get emails of, of people discussing uh, very regularly uh, how, to, how to construct things for uh, new folks and veterans alike. Um, one of the main things, and this wasn't mentioned earlier, but uh, is, oops, where did my, there we go. Um, when you are creating an app, uh, simply the uh, browser console um, and the developer tools built within the browser. And I'll bring that up because I'm going to show you like a, the creation of a simple app here today. Um, but the browser tools and the ability to debug like within the browser, uh, that that is you know one of the one of the best resources available. And then finally, uh, GitHub. Uh, it there's a learning curve to GitHub, but I absolutely think that it's uh, well worth the learning uh, uh, curve to get around. The 
uh, apps that I have are all hosted on the web, so I can access them anywhere. Um, it makes it very easy to share the apps that I create. And then uh, I'm happy that the code is out there that I've created as well. So anybody who happens to stumble upon my uh, GitHub um, share, they can use that as a resource to kind of see how I've created things and maybe give themselves some ideas uh, on how to create as well. Okay, um, so as I've developed apps, um, some of the best practices that I've learned along the way, which I really wish I would have known getting started, it really would have saved me a lot of stress and effort. Um, number one, uh, having a boilerplate code template to start a new project with. Um, so, and I, I regularly update this with like, if I learn about a new library that I think is really useful, I go ahead and add that to my boiler boilerplate code. And uh, this is what I have so far. It doesn't show up nicely on the screen because the PDF is, uh, the width is um, limited. But you can see here, I have, you know, the basic HTML parts taken care of. Um, and then importing JSX graph that's necessary, although it looks like I need to update which one I'm using here. Um, and then uh, some other libraries I've learned uh, to use along the way, like MathJS is a great one. JSTAT, uh, whenever I'm doing stuff with statistics is, is very valuable. Um, and especially MathJax, uh, in order to draw things in text on the applets using uh, nice mathematical notation rather than just text is, is wonderful. Um, and then I kind of found a few others that I use, which you don't have to necessarily import yourself, but whatever you find useful, it's great to just put into the boilerplate code because it's easier to just delete something you don't use in a particular app than it is to go back and figure out which libraries are where. Um, and then I create tons of uh, libraries myself. I, I try to not keep any functions that I create that I think could be used from one app to the next. I try not to store that within a specific app. I try to import it from a library. And then that way I can more easily uh, reuse it, obviously, for that reason. But then secondly, uh, it makes it so that if there's an error in it, you have to only find that function once and fix the error and then it fixes it for all apps that depend upon it. And lastly, it's just after you create dozens of apps, <laughs> it's hard to remember where individual functions are. And so uh, I just keep them in libraries. And that's one of the, if I could tell my younger self uh, one piece of advice, that's that would be it. Um, and then, you know, lastly, there's just uh, the basic JSX adding uh, to the uh, HTML, and then creating a basic board with uh, not much on it, simply so I just basic things that I want to remember the syntax for. And and this I usually kind of delete as I create an app. But like I said, it's easier to have something there that's useful uh, and then delete it if you don't need it uh, than to um, try and find where it is. All right. Um, if you're new to JSX and you're intimidated by the programming, um, I promise you just starting with like HTML boilerplate code is like the, the best part. Um, because really your focus on creating your app is uh, outside of that HTML boilerplate, your focus is just on the mathematics. Um, I created, my first app was extremely simple. There was not much to it whatsoever, although it was an extreme challenge to me. But if you, if you look at this app and you look at the code of the app, there, there's not much beyond the boilerplate. So all this does is just demonstrates to students that, you know, if you have two angles, uh, you know, uh, they add up to 90 degrees. So it just demonstrates complementary angles. So it's a very simple app. But if you look at the code, which, there we go. There's all the boilerplate code. And then the main part here is just creating points 
uh, and then creating uh, lines for the angles and then creating the angle part. Uh, this is generally just stuff for uh, making labels, okay? Um, but there is, most of this is the mathematics of, of what needs to be created, uh, which I'm gonna show you in, in just a moment when I, when I create an app together here. Um, and so let, let's do that actually. Uh, let, uh, I'll run you through kind of the process that I do when creating an app. Um, so first off, uh, begin with the end in mind. So what app you want to create, uh, start with a picture of it. You know, begin with what you want the app to look like in the very end, and then kind of work your way toward that. So uh, I decided to pick a simple app here today to work with this since uh, I have a limited time. Um, but the app that I'm going to do uh, just kind of shows students that angles in a semicircle are 90 degrees. All right, so for instance, uh, if we have a circle and it has a center point and there's two points along the diameter which pass through the center, uh, if you pick any point on the circle and create a triangle, that this angle right here ends up being 90 degrees. All right, so let's say we have students who don't believe that and you want to show them, you know, that this works for any particular, uh, you know, uh, a circle, any particular, you know, uh, for whatever reasons, this always works. So um, when we create this, you know, it's clear that we're going to need to draw out a circle. We're going to need some points, like we need the center of the circle. We need a couple of points uh, on the circle, and we need uh, a third point here, which kind of moves along the circle. Um, and that's a really uh, useful kind of point, which is called a glider. Uh, and I'll, I'll bring that up in just a moment when we get to that creation. Um, but first, we just have we have a couple of points that we need to create, and we need to create a circle. So um, I will start with my boilerplate code here. And this is what I had up earlier. And like I said, most of this isn't going to be necessary. So I'm going to delete out the libraries that I won't need. Um, I might need MathJax. So I'll leave that in. Certainly, I need JSX graph. Um, these won't be necessary. And then I don't think I'll need any of these as well. So most of that just goes away. Um, oh, uh, one thing I'll, I'll show here, uh, if we look at this just Mm, well, ignore this. <laughs> I'll just delete this. Uh, very often what I will have is two JSX graphs, uh, JSX graph boxes going. And the reason for that is I'll have one with like uh, controls, like check boxes and things like that, and uh, not have it clutter up the drawing. Um, so I'll kind of have two of them on screen at the same time. So I'll, I'll just remove all that. All right, so we don't need this. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the rest of this. So now we'll just have a basic JSX graph if we take a look at this app, which I should have up. Um, let's see, let me pull it up real quick. There we go. Sorry, I should have had that up to begin with. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I kind of I always make these boxes, these div elements, so that they're resizable, um, so that you can kind of fit them on screen a little bit better. Okay. Um, so we have a couple of things we need to create. So the first place I go to when I make a creation is uh, go to the API. All right. So uh, I had the API open right here, and we need to create a circle. So it looks like there's a couple of different ways of creating a circle. Like you can create a circle from two points, or you can create a circle from a point and a, a, a like a length. So 
that seems like a circle that you couldn't resize, but if you create it from two points, you could resize it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create it from two points. All right, so I'm going to, uh, right over here, just start off with uh, a couple of points. So, um, let's say, let, this will be the center of the circle, or dot create, and I'm gonna create a point. And then you just give the location of the points. So that's at zero, zero. I'm just gonna put that at the origin. And uh, you saw earlier where you can name stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and name this point C because otherwise it will show up as point A to begin with. All right, so um, great. We're, we're on our way here. Uh, let me, if I just refresh the screen, you can see here, I've got my center, okay? All right, uh, I'll need a, a, and another point to create the um, create the circle. So let's make point A. And I guess it doesn't really matter exactly where I put that. Uh, I think I'll just kind of pick some point uh, off to the side. So I have a circle that's got a little bit of size to it. And uh, that should by default be named A, but I'll go ahead and give it the name A just in case. Okay, and then, so there's my center, there's point A. Now, it only takes those two points to create the circle, so I can go ahead and make the circle here. So let circ equal board.create circle. And then you give the two points that you want to create the circle through. So. I'm just going to reference the points that I have uh, created. So that's what's nice if you use variables. Uh, you can just reference them from earlier. All right, so I should have a circle now. Great. OK, now I need a, a point along a diameter. So I need, um, I need to create a point over here. Uh, and the thing is, if I move my circle, I need that to move accordingly. So I, I can't just do a reflection over on that side and just say this is like, since this was in negative five, four, I can't just put it at like four, neg or four, five, and then reflect it. I want it to always be in the right spot. So this is kind of where like it's more math than it is programming. So to make that happen, um, what I need to do, let me bring this back up, is I need to create an object kind of behind the scenes that is a line. And that line is going to pass through points A and point C. And then I'm going to create over here an intersection between uh, the circle and uh, this line. And that's going to ensure that B is always uh, in the right position, but on the other side uh, of the circle. And I often find that there are interesting little tools like within JSX Graph that I'm unaware of. Um, so there might be something in there that will automatically create that point. But I generally think of the mathematics first, and so I generally code based off the mathematics. Um, but if you dig through the API, you may find that there's a, a way of creating this easier than what I'm doing. Um, but uh, let's see. So we'll create that line. So just like we did earlier, uh, when a line was created in the, the basics, you just give it the two points you're passing through. So you're passing through A and C. OK, and then uh, point B. What I want there is uh, point B to be the intersection of those two lines. And if you look up in the uh, JSX graph documentation, <laughs> sorry, I have too many windows going here, um, then you can find often, you know, these nice uh, handy things to help you create stuff. So like an intersection, uh, is something that you can just create. And so you just provide the two items that you want to intersect, and it will uh, do that for you. So intersection between points, or sorry, between the line and the circle. And then I'm going to name this uh, B. 
Okay, and let's see how we're doing. Oh, I have my line, but I don't see my intersection. Okay, so uh, here's where debugging is indispensable. All right, so uh, my intersection point didn't show up, so I go to the browser tools. And so um, however you bring those up on uh, yours, you'll generally find in the browser console uh, some kind of uh, information telling you what's going on. So right here, I've got an error and it says circle is not defined. So what that means is right. I called this one circ and then I said it was circle down here. So that browser console is indispensable for debugging. So, all right, that should be fixed now. And yes, whenever I move A, B is exactly where I think it should be. Okay, but I don't really want this line to be here. So I can I can take care of that. Um, you can turn off uh, the visibility. So you can just say visible false, and then you can no longer see it here, but B is always going to be in the right spot because of that. So um, lots of different things you can, you can edit there. Um, if I am running short on time, feel free to let me know. Um, I, I, I will, I'm getting close to the end here, but let me know if I'm, I'm getting short on time. Okay, uh, then the next thing is we need a triangle. Um, and if you look in the documentation, uh, I don't think you'll find a, an item for a triangle, but certainly it's a type of polygon. So uh, there is a polygon that's available. So that's what I'm going to do for my triangle. I'm going to uh, let triangle create polygon. And to create a polygon, uh, we give it the points, all right, so uh, that it's going to pass through. So it's going to pass through points A, B, and, oh, I haven't defined D yet. Oh, I better go back and fix that. So uh, we need point D, which is the point that's on the circle, but it rides along the circle. And I, I said that that was called a glider. So if you look up the reference for a glider, uh, it's a type of point, but when you create it, you give the object that you want it to glide along. Um, so I want it to uh, glide along my circle here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let D equal uh, board.create. This is going to be a glider. And you can give kind of an in initial point where you want it to be, but I'm just going to have it start anywhere on my circle. All right, that's fine. Uh, it will pick something by default. So, all right, there's point D. And if I move point D, you can see here now it is um, uh, staying on the circle, which is great. All right, let's go back to my polygon. So I just need point D to be part of my polygon and we're doing great because now we have uh, the triangle. And if you'll notice that angle right there does look to be 90 degrees wherever it is, but if we wanna know for certain, we can, uh, create an angle, right? So if we let angle equal or dot create angle, uh, and then the angle just takes the three points that it's passing through. Although you do have to be careful the order that you put it in. So like if I do A, uh, D, B, for instance, uh, then the angle is going to show up in the uh, the middle uh, value that you give, okay? Um, but if you'll notice here, it's calculating the angle on the outside, all right? So it matters what order you put these in. So I should have uh, BDA instead, and then that will give me the interior angle, which you can see here as uh, showing up as a square telling me that it's 90 degrees. All right, now it does switch if I go on this side of the circle, so that's something that I might wanna fix later on. But I think that this is reasonable enough for any student to kind of see that this is a 90 degree angle all the way around. Um, and you could even uh, make a text box sort of demonstrating that. So you could say like, let 
text equal or dot create some text. And I suppose I'll put it, where should it go? Like negative 10, eight, okay. So negative 10, eight. And then the text that I want it to be, I want that text to change. So I'm gonna use a function and uh, I'm going to say, you know, angle A, B, D equals, and then I'm going to insert the value of that angle, um, which if you reference the angle object, you can get the value of the angle by calling the value function. So uh, that should always update with the new angle measure as we go around the circle. Oh, okay, but it is, <laughs> of course, in, in radian measure, all right, rather than degrees. So if I wanted to show the student that it's in degrees, I would need, of course, to uh, convert that to degrees. But I think that's where I'll stop here because I, I don't want to take too much time. Um, uh, but that's, you know, that's the process that I go through when I'm creating um, applets. I, I just... I have the boilerplate code, and then the rest of it really is just focusing on the mathematics of creating the thing that I want to put together. And if you do have to build anything that is outside of the mathematics, put it in a library and reference that over and over again, rather than like rebuilding it each time. All right, so I hope that helps some folks get started. Uh, are there any questions?